Welcome to the trailhead, where trails start and stories unfold. Welcome to the show, everyone. Now, here's J.D. Wow, that's two weeks in a row. I don't know what to do with myself. I, I'm Man, beside myself. Incredible. I'm absolutely <laughs> beside myself. I just I can't. That's I don't know what to do with it. absolutely incredible that that worked. Uh, I'm real sorry for uh, that coming on a little hot. I uh, The volume up on that. But, yeah, I'm, so, I'm really surprised that worked. So, all right. Well, welcome to the trailhead. How are you guys doing? Uh, do we lose Fantastic. somebody? Fantastic. I'm back. No, I think, okay. I think we got a phantom uh, stream coming in out there. Um, so tonight we've got Alyssa. Say hi, Alyssa. Ooh, that was loud. And we've got phones. Pope. Mute your cell phones. Pope and Randy, say hi. Hello. Right. That was my cell phone that was being interrupted. <laughs> and Aaron, welcome to the show. Aaron, this is the part where you say hi. Okay, there you go. All right. This is the part where you say hi. I think you might have he's a, up yeah, a he's freezing up a little bit. That's okay. We'll get back to you in a second. Uh, anyway, uh, and I got someone got in touch with me to get their stickers last week. So that's a reminder. If you would like to help us out and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, it helps us in the rankings, helps us get more viewers and helps us do more cool stuff. To that end, if you go to the trailheadnetwork.com and take a look at the blog, there should be a page, excuse me, and on the link to this show notes on this uh, particular show, there's going to be a link to the blog post with all the information on how to enter uh, and get a eight gang switch panel. Uh, we've got shirts from a number of us, including me and my yellow JK. Uh, Pope put up, I don't know, what, like seven shirts? I don't remember I've how many. You, Randy was yelling at you. That's all I know. Remember. Okay. Um, it's like, stop. We brought we and, we got a whole bunch of tip shirts that we made for Winter Four Before and Trail Hero. So there's okay. a few leftovers in there. So there's definitely going to be one of somebody's size. Awesome. <laughs> oh, well, uh, we're going to have the Trailhead Podcast shirts. Uh, there's actually a shop already up on the website. Uh, we're not really making a whole lot of money off of them. They're just to get some merch out there for everybody. Uh, if you want to go get one, go get one. Otherwise, uh, there'll be one in the swag pack that we give away when we get to 50. 50 reviews. Uh, just send us a review and tell your friends about us. It'd be awesome. Really appreciate it. Another reminder that Friday nights are now the Friday night live shows. Uh, we're going to have random guests like Aaron, who got told 30 minutes before we got here today that he was going to be on. <laughs> Good job, uh, Randy. There you go. That's all right, Randy. <laughs> that's booking a guest with, you know, with 30 minutes to go is better than booking no guests. So I'll take it. Um, oh, I love Aaron. Awesome. So let's see here. What else? If you go to the website, if you go to the trailheadnetwork.com, there is actually a link to both our YouTube live stream and as well as the riverside.com link. If you follow the riverside.com link, you can actually join us and ask a question live if you want to. And then, um, yeah, you have to, we gotta let you in, but just, uh, join via computer and, uh, we'll get some people on. It'd be a lot of fun. Otherwise, if you're too gun shy for that, leave us a message at 719-408-0132. Um, Jason would love to have, be wished a happy graduation. Um, he is not here today. He's at his retirement. Well, actually now he's at his retirement party. I think I saw on Facebook that, uh, he was, do, he was done, right? Didn't we see that? What? That he's, he's like, he's got his retirement stuff. Like they do kind of a stage walk for it. Like it's almost like a graduation. I'm going to make fun of him even more for it next time. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. That was he's awesome. <laughs> wanted to also show you guys let's see here let me get this business as part of the blog stuff that we started doing um on our website if you go can you all see that make sure because mm -hmm. it's a different tab uh, we've talked a lot about argentine pass and i wanted to show you guys this picture so this is argentine pass um, 1897 uh, or 1904, I can't remember, one of those two dates. Um, and then that's pretty much the exact same spot about three years ago, four years ago. And I'm going to try that's to get a better cool. angle of the picture next year. So, yeah, it was really fun to do this one. Cool. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, we've got, we're doing regular posts about um, 
random stuff that I find that's interesting. Um, this guy built a four by four off-road Hellcat and it's ridiculous and awesome. And I want to, yeah. Why are you asking what is, why are you flashy? Huh? I don't know. We're having like a strobe. <laughs> we don't have a strobe in the room. I have a setting somewhere in, depending on what your camera is for, uh, like 50 or 60 Hertz for like strobe and TV. I don't okay. think it's within, or you have a light going on. No, it's just strobing on the TV. Anyway, it's right. fine. He's um, trying real hard. So yeah, so check out the website. Um, I've had a lot of fun putting that stuff together. If you guys have any yeah. ideas or anything that you want to post blog uh, post about, I don't really care what it's about. Um, hit me up and we'll put it up. Cool. Uh, let's see here. And that's it. Um, that's all I got for business. Um, I do I have so it's yeah, I think it's uh moose. <laughs> <Is it Moose? laughs> that one was Dottie. Moose. She's breathing, She's breathing right Dottie. in the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. She's trying to Can't eat it. Right into He's the microphone. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. She's like a, she's at Boston that snorts and <laughs> she's she's being a lot. Hey, can you still That's hear awesome. her? No, yeah, but it's cute. No, yeah, it's awesome. It'll it'll be. She's right. old. We'll she's like out. eighteen years old. I know, and I always oh feel. Gosh. I, I always I have a geriatric cat, and every time he comes up to me, and I'm just like, oh, I don't really want you on me, but I feel bad. You're really old. Oh, oh yeah, so cute. she's an old Boston Terrier. That's amazing. Hey, you can't stand there and do that. Come here, you can have to come down here. <laughs> She's kind of an old we're gonna, lady, and she gets to do whatever she wants. But we're going to make this the heavy breathing section of the podcast today. <laughs> Sorry. So if you were just turned on by that over your car stereo, you should really talk to somebody. I just, you know, no. All right, so I have an announcement. Okay. Here we go. I'm so excited. Did it really not? Yeah, there we go. It's home! I have my Jeep! Yay! Congrats! I'm so happy I have my Jeep. So, How's yes, it feel? Uh, it feels awesome. Uh, I am terrified to drive it right now. Um, and that's just really because I haven't had it for so long. And it was a very, my wife's car is a Camaro and it sits, you know, six inches from the ground. And this thing I got to hop up into. And it took a little bit of like reacquainting myself with it's how it felt. But we took it out yesterday for a 10 minute ride because the dog can't handle, he got way too excited. So I'm like, we're going to do a quick run around the neighborhood and come back because mm -hmm. you can't do, do any more than that. Um, and it feels great. It's, um, it's, I got all that new steer smarts gear in it. Uh, it's got a brand new Dynatrek axle in the front. It's got new lockers now in the front and it looks fantastic. It'll never be that clean underneath it again. That's cool. Yeah, I'm excited awesome. for you. I'm very I bet jealous. It feels so. good. Did you get the Yeti XD ends on your uh, steer smart setup? Yes. The only thing I, I pretty much got almost everything that they offer. Oh, what the hell I should have, you know what? And I made to, I meant to put a list together of that stuff so I could call it off, but it was pretty much everything except a couple of stabilizers and something else. And then um, I might add those later on to see if it helps anymore. Uh, it's really good going down the highway now. And it, like, I don't, it's been so long now. It was miles ago. I don't remember what it felt like when I drove it before I started modifying it. So I'm going to say it's as good as it was. So, but I, that's fair. It, I mean, it's, it's pretty good. Might need to tighten it up in a couple places, but uh, I got a diff flush at and another 400 miles. And then, <laughs> We're off to Vegas, and I'll do some light stuff out there and uh, get some new video and stuff. And then hopefully everything is gosher. And yeah, because I, I wanted to talk recovery gear because I was going back to Las Vegas again. Um, yeah. So yeah, earlier today, I'm like, I need to put that video together. And I'm really glad. Where are you, awesome. you going to wheel out in Las Vegas? Um, there's a couple of kind of mildish trails just southeast of Vegas. And actually a couple of really long mile trails southwest of Vegas. Uh, and honestly, I can't remember the names of them right now, but uh, I'll try to, I'll get those for the next time I'm on. But I, that's, we're doing that at the beginning of March. So typically it's, um, it can either be wet and rainy or it can just be cold. So we'll see. If it's wet and rainy, I'm not going out. Last year around this time, I did some 
trails in Vegas area with a dirty adventure crew. It was a lot of fun. We did. I actually drove down by myself. Randy was busy working. So I've got to go play for two days. Dirty adventure crew, just the misfit. Oh, nice. I just don't went down there. I had to meet the yeah. snore guys that way. So shout out to Southern Nevada Off-Road Recovery. Who did we do? Who, where did we go? Copper Cache was one of the place trails we did, I but can I can't remember now. the other one. Yeah, I'll look it. I'll, I'll I'll look it up while we're sitting here to the side. We'll come back to it in the middle of well, something else. Pull Jason. Alyssa's having fun right now. I want to hear about Alyssa's trip. Yeah. I've been jealous. <laughs> You've been good busy. Like you. you fixed You've your been Toyota. Having fun. It's a couple weekends. Yeah. <laughs> it's been What's a, going it's on? been my first time out since October, so it's been some time. Um, let's see. Last. Oh man, today's Friday. It's been a whole week. Okay, so I guess technically last weekend, um, I was in Havasu. There was a Toyota takeover at the Anderson Toyota dealership, um, and so many Toyotas from like Arizona, California, Utah, Nevada, Washington. Like so many Toyotas came down, um, and it was really fun. So I went out there on a Friday. Some people went out on Thursday, but I went out there on a Friday, and I didn't come home till Tuesday. So nice. cool. yeah, that was nice. And then the weekend before I went down to Tucson and we rewired some of my lights. Um, and that took so much longer than we expected, but <laughs> oh, I hate wiring. And I only oh. did it with like friends that were like really particular that like make sure everything's clean and done right. And, but man, the three of us still, it, I think we did it for like eight or nine hours. And it was just like cleaning up stuff, redoing stuff, but it's so much better now. They should work from yeah. now on. Yeah. Cause they were very finicky before. It's um, good to redo that once in a while. Cause every once in a while you find a short that you didn't know you wired. And that's why you keep having battery problems that die every year and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mine just, or I was just saying, because he wired my lockers crappy and they went out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want those to go out. <laughs> um, yeah, like they weren't even important lights, thank goodness. Um, but there, I put these rock lights inside of my bed rack. So I have light in my truck bed when we go out at night. Um, and they'll work like half of the time. Or they'll work and then they'll die like halfway through the night. And I just could never figure out why. But I kind of figured it was because of the wire. I did it and it's so much better. So we did nice. that in my chase lights. And then nice. we just explored around. I don't even know the area name. Sen- Sonata? It's not Sonora. Something southeast of Tucson. So went around there. It was chill. Oh. Yeah. I love that. Did Were yeah. you in Moab at all? What was the video that you posted the other day? Um, oh. Wasn't Moab. I don't even remember. No. Posted. That may I have to look because that's going to bother me if I don't look. You know what's funny <laughs> is I just started following you, so it might be an older video that it's thrown at me too. That's funny. Oh, maybe video recently. Nothing about. Oh, maybe it was Sedona. Was it like snowy? Was it Red oh, Rock and snow was... and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Sedona. That was, probably... that was like the north side okay. of Sedona. I was yeah. like, ooh, that looks pretty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty. It's it's just two hours away versus like seven. <laughs> oh yeah, so. totally. Yeah. Welcome back, Mr. Cotter. Two laptops um, and two phones later. <laughs> that's that's usually how it goes when you try to do this shit on the fly. I can tell you first hand experience. Pope, real quick to answer your question earlier. Uh, there's a easy trail. Um, it's probably more like just a dirt county road called Rainbow Gardens and Lava Butte Loop, and it's just east of las vegas in between the lake and the city so we might head out in that direction that's cool i just i just hate the mud i hate the mud in vegas so how do you feel about mud Aaron? oh god <laughs> <laughs> i left that back in washington and i didn't need that a few weeks ago <laughs> he took you know? his princess of an lj um, Ouch. out with us i'm just kidding he's an elitist he's got an lj that's all like super <laughs> rad and he won't LJs. get her dirty mm-hmm. He won't get it dirty, and I'm like it's really giving him crap. Really it's pretty. really pretty, <laughs> and it's a beast. It does a lot of crazy things, but he's like, it better yeah. be dry and like really nice weather <laughs> beforehand. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Here's so the cool. thing: they were underappreciated when they came out. I was yes. one of the people that underappreciated them, and then as soon as they stopped making them, I was just like, I really want one, and here we are. <laughs> 
They're I don't like have one. unobtainium now. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's like my wife's Jeep Renegade. Uh, it's my wife's Wrangler Renegade Edition. She can't find same thing. All right. Awesome. I know. I know where a manual one is in Las Vegas, but it's yeah. not automatic. Yeah, Those are the best problem. ones. Not, not, a, a not, not for my one. wife wants to do. Yeah, not for my wife. My wife just wants to. <laughs> she just wants to relive the high school. I think so. And I, I, I get it. I'm there with you. But my high school was a 19 Sunbird, and I don't really want to relive that. Awesome. Well, both of our Jeeps are down, so Pope's sitting here trying to find another one to buy because he's an idiot. That was going to be my next question. So what's the count this week? Yeah, what uh, happened with your one. Jeeps? One. All right. Oh, Misfit. Did you not hear about Misfit's engine? And so my motor uh, blew up was on that the way on to your Winter 4x4. Way to San Paulo? Yeah. yeah, something happened yeah, on the way recently. to San Paulo. What happened? So the motor blew up, uh, it threw a rod. And so on the side of the highway, God, so it. we just, we finished winter four by four with just Jim. We just screw it. We'll just take just the one down. I had a trail concierge all weekend. He yeah, drove me I... to the hard things <laughs> so I could like save my energy, you know, he, if it was in four high, if it was in four high, he was driving. It was awesome. That's why she does so good on the rocks because she's not stressed <laughs> out from driving the dunes on the way to get to him. Hey, honey, will you go move my Jeep for me? Uh, it was great. It was a good time. For the whole week. I did. It's the first time he actually got footage of me. It was amazing. <laughs> it was really cool. And he got footage of a lot of people. So it was like we actually got footage. He hiked. I hiked a lot. It was an eight day hiking trip for me. <laughs> he did. Because it was either, it was either uh -huh. be quiet or get out. And he chose get out because it was easier. So you should tell him what's going on with your Jeep. Oh, my Jeep's so cool right now. I'm so excited. <laughs> How cool is it? Uh, she's getting work done right now. And you guys are going to die. Like, I don't know. I just met with Powder Coat and they have a lot of ideas and I didn't even know. Oh gosh. <laughs> she's like forgetting all about the, the I know. I mean, it's and she's focusing on the... No. It's the most recent thing that's happened to me is my whole, like, anyway. Yeah, she's getting three and three link, four link suspension. Um, we found a lot of little things, so it's awesome because I really love our welder and I think he's amazing and he's making Jem really strong and she's going to be so cool. I'm so excited. <laughs> I just want to drive her so bad. Like I've, I don't know how he's doing it because it's only been two weeks and I feel like I'm going to die. Oh, um, do you, and I do know you how you feel. I don't like, I can't. I, think I it's just really put wheels hard. and tires on the truck. That made me feel better. <laughs> I hadn't driven my Jeep since July. Like, no, I don't no, know. I know. And he's barely driven his Jeep since August. So, and he's not getting his Jeep back until probably late, late April. April. May. Yeah. So it's being shipped off to America's most wanted for the VA swap next week. Okay. Cool. Or week after oh, next, cool. actually week after next. They're oh, building so they're doing it on site right now. Or... Yeah. They're doing on site in okay. Michigan. So that's so awesome. They're actually put, they, they started working on putting together the crate and all the pieces right now. So yeah, should be fun. I was supposed to get an estimate from them on doing an Atlas in it, but I didn't get one yet. <laughs> so I'm going to bug him. <laughs> and try to get that done while we're at it. Yeah, you know, this is who I'm married to. It's happening. It's happening. No, and I'm really I, scared. I'm really scared. Like unnecessary digs, like power. every it's five, but it's a lot of unnecessary it's a lot of digs. that I like I'm married to a three year old. Like I know it and I'm like giving him a machine gun. Like I'm scared. He, he's a three year old with adult money <laughs> and a credit card. And yes, he's like you know. between three and twelve, there's like he stopped maturing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> The problem, and the problem is, is now with like Instagram, it's very easy to find somebody that's, that'll agree with you. Like, yeah, one hundred percent, you need that five thousand dollar, you know, piece of work or you know, part that you need for your Jeep. One hundred percent is gonna make everything ten times I mean, better. Yeah, him getting an engine, my powder coat, it's gonna look so sick when I'm done. <laughs> nice. All right. That's well, fun. and I'm getting, and I told my shop to call Aaron and find out when my sliders are coming today. Thanks for taking care of that today, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have an, uh, an ETI or an ETR in your Jeep? Like Me? You're supposed to get um, back? Well, it's going to be in the outdoor expo. And so I think they're shooting for, he's trying to finish it as fast as possible. Chance doesn't want to be down to the wire. So, and okay. I have to get her clean because she is so dirty. He's like, there is no way we can put her anywhere until she's detailed. So, 
I, if anybody, well, Erin can contest. My Jeep is very dirty and she needs it. It's like putting lipstick shows on a are, pig right now. Like she's No, a but mess. shows are a good reason to get in there with a deep clean and a, yeah. and a good power yeah. washer and an uncomfortable yeah. position. Mm-hmm. It yeah. took me like so three she's days gonna look really cool after that last trip. Oh, Chance is loving the mud. You like, should see how much mud. See, oh my gosh! Like he was like, arf. he actually took our axles out and just like power washed them because they were right. still. And I spent almost forty five minutes just spraying the undercoat of my thing because I knew that if like I washed out all of my grease, it didn't matter. They're gonna grease her anyway. So I just tried to like <laughs> wash everything in total detail, and I didn't even touch it. It feels like I don't know. Aaron knows he spent seventy dollars at the car wash that day. Yeah, actually, I looked at the bank statement and I was like, wow, I really did spend seventy dollars cleaning the Jeep that day. And that was oh just the gosh. first round. It was a lot of mud. <laughs> yeah, mud. It was like. It was like the dumbest idea. It was like, let's just get Always our Jeeps is. dirty oh, on our way out of town. Always like is. it was just long yep. enough it, to like the last two never, years we've done that run. It's been like that too. I'm not doing it again. Like I think that that's so stupid. Like I, it was dry. All, I mean, not dry ish. And she had baths in between, but it wasn't that crap. It was basically like, see how far I can drive in the mud just to get like four inches of mud all over my Jeep. <laughs> It's like nasty. Last year there was a hill too. that was a slip and slide. Yeah, yeah it's it. clay and mud at the same time. It's like evil. It's evil. Yeah, it's not fun. Yeah, it's that silty stuff. It's really hard to get out of everything. Pretty sure that like last year's is still in my Jeep. <laughs> it, and so it's like layers yeah. of it. Like it's so bad. I, and I, feel I feel like we talked because... about it before. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. No, no, you're good. So it's that's that, us. Um, it's like when you drive when you drive through that mud and it hits the tailpipe and it smells like ceramics class in school. There is something about it. It is not good. <laughs> I paint a hell of a picture, don't I? So, uh, <laughs> so Aaron, how many vehicles do you have or not have in service right now? We should just go ahead and round in the service? table. Uh, yeah. In, in service, I have two two Jeeps that are in service uh, and two that are down. <laughs> <laughs> one is perpetually uh, down and the other one is the work vehicle that... Uh, just you know pope and i have a lot in common with jt issues and, that's <laughs> me. and i don't know if it's it's just it's strange because like that his jeep doesn't have the one ton axles and stuff that mine has yet he still managed to blow up the minivan motor and it's in it <laughs> i've only got i think not even eighteen thousand miles out of the the factory three on that gladiator my family has twenty four thousand approximately and it died Makes me we feel got a lot the better. title two hours before. It yeah, blew the, title, up. the title was in my that hands is, two hours before it blew up. That's what. That is Literally, funny. we were leaving yeah. for Winter Four by Four. We went and checked the mailbox. We came outside and or came inside, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, put that somewhere special. It's so important." Like I was so excited that we paid him off, and like he put it in the important place, and we left. And two hours later, his motor blew up. It was amazing. Such I'm really great glad. Luck I have. I'm really glad Alyssa is joining us at this point in her <laughs> Toyota career uh, because she's had Toyota issues and recurring issues so that she can't like sit over in a corner and be just like, my Toyota is great at 100,000 miles. So she's had her own issues. Yeah, <laughs> I'll do it. But... Mm -hmm, exactly. They all do. If you when your car exactly. don't live very long. No. But your I LJ's is doing good. Mine across country, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that your JT didn't survive highway miles. Mine at least no. was like vertical and smoking like a locomotive at times, you know? <laughs> like I actually like show people how to look, roll coal in a Jeep Gladiator that's a regular. That's a, I can't <laughs> imagine why your engine blew up. Oh, Aaron's seen it. I can't imagine. Yep. <laughs> and I was pretty easy on mine. I mean, in my defense, I'm a crawler. So. That's, I mean, I and I don't even like, I don't, I don't know how to put like a a grade on how much or how hard, how much harder it is to your vehicle. If you're doing rock crawling versus just kind of overlanding and stuff like that. I feel like each one has its own wear and tear. It's just different components that are going to break on you. That, that's well, just if there's me. any question between the 2.0 turbo and the three, six, I have proven that it's way better than the. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're with the guys yeah. in the Philippines and they're 102 liters. Uh -huh. Yeah. Under power yeah. over axle. You don't break <laughs> shit. It's like, that's I mean, why Toyotas are so reliable, right? <laughs> they don't have enough horsepower <laughs> to break anything. <laughs> there you go. So funny story about getting my Jeep back. Um, I drive 40 minutes, um, well, 45 minutes that's to true. and from uh, my office. 
for my regular day job. And I've been driving my wife's Camaro for a while. And when you're driving a Camaro, there's something that happens to you when you're behind the wheel and you just, you go faster than you would normally go. Um, but the minute that I got this Jeep back driving the same piece of highway, I'm putting along miles an hour on the right-hand lane, not passing anybody. Uh, there's something that happens to you when you've got limited throttle and limited acceleration. I can vouch for it in that level. Exactly. Very cool. Uh, let's see here. Um, I don't really have any news. It's just that, that one, one, unless you want to do it. I don't know if you saw that or not, but I didn't think I saw it. You may, see. I, I sent anything? the link out in the calendar, but I don't know if any. Oh, let's look in the calendar. We have <laughs> Let's open. We the like calendar. to walk in blind. It's fine. <laughs> no, that's all right. I, so uh, while we're while you guys while you're pulling that up, I can the other piece of news that I forgot. So Wednesday, the Off the Road Again podcast aired an episode they did oh, with me on Monday, and yeah, I'll just want to do plenty to worry about it. It's not a big one. We can push I'll go to the next spam. Week. I bet it's in there. Oh, it's not even um, a spam. No, we won't worry about it. Just all right, we'll don't worry about, about it. Later. Yeah. Uh, so I was on the Off the Road Again podcast. Uh, the first time I was on their show was a couple years ago. And I was just in there as the Trails Off Road capacity. And I didn't really kind of have my own stuff going on yet. Uh, but now they took quick. me back and interviewed me about that and then the, the show. So check out that show uh, just to get a taste of more of the Trails Off Road stuff that I do. And we talk about the show a little bit. So hopefully at some point we can have them in. I'd love to have them in for a Friday night. Be fun. That'd be fun. Aaron, since we aren't going to do any news, I think you should uh, introduce yourself a little bit more than just you have two LJs. Um, <laughs> well, who are you? One. Where are you from? One LJ. Just one LJ, excuse me. You have two Jeeps. So tell us a little about yourself. Just introduce yourself. It's not really an interview show, so it's really more of a, uh, we want to know who, does, who the hell it is we're talking to, because Randy just like, hey, should we invite Aaron? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm I just just an average dude who likes jeeping and found himself uh, working his way into the Jeep and off-road industry. But for the most part, I'll just, I'll just stick to uh, my overly enthusiastic self when it comes to Jeeps. But uh, there you go. <laughs> I started out in, in an old CJ5 that... Uh, now, I had no driving experience, no mechanical experience at all. But my parents um, decided to get me an old CJ that was all rusted out. Wiring didn't work, none of that. I used hand signals my my first uh, time out with that thing. <laughs> uh, and throughout high school, and I just kind of learned how to wheel and um, watching family and, and just wheeling from anything from sand dunes, mud flats to like Colorado trails up in Washington, just something that's like dirt roads, uh, all the way up to just technical kind of uh, washed out roads too up there um, with some uh, technical rock crawling. And then um, my wife and I, luckily uh, her and I both had really good career opportunities happened right at the ex exact same time. And we moved down here to, uh, to Utah now and not too far away from Randy and Pope. And uh, so <laughs> ever since, I, I've just been going really insane on the technical rock crawling. So the LJ is, uh, went from just a stock LJ on like 33s and, a, you know, like a, a good long arm uh, now <laughs> stretched and uh, JK axle swapped and all that other stuff. And then the wife's, uh, she's got a TJ that she's contemplating right now, chopping in half to stretch uh, the body to an LJ. So we might end up having <laughs> technically two. <laughs> it's only money, right? But um, it always starts well, with, I'm going to leave it stock. And just so you know, his wife is hot and funny. It sucks. Like she's like <laughs> she's my favorite human. <laughs> yeah. He like, he married up for sure. Like, <laughs> Oh, damn. <laughs> There's no shame Swinging. in that either. I fully recognize that. So. No, nope, that's all right. Go she for brings it. Yep. snacks it. everywhere. Like, if you need snacks, if snacks make you happy, like, literally, like, Snickerdoodles. Marcy will have snacks. She's got snacks. She's definitely the trail support. I mean, she makes sure that I am uh, not dying of starvation out there because uh, I do get a little lost in it. Uh, I have been called uh, been called uh, overly enthusiastic before. <laughs> and, and so, uh, oh, I, I've been yeah. the sauce, yeah. You know? So uh, I've she, been yelled at more than once for coming home way too late. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. But uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I grew up from basically just trying to learn how to jeep myself, and and I was I was the guy in in high school that friends would call up in the middle of the night because they were 
out late and getting stuck in their Jeep. So um, <laughs> funny enough, how recovery is tonight. I have a lot of experience in recovery. <laughs> this years. was a random AF subject. So cool. Yeah, that works. And, and he what I can has and recovered us a lot. To do it. There you go. That's awesome. Um, well, and yeah, it, that should be a reminder to anybody who's listening. If you'd like to be on the show, like reach out to us. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you've got a fun or interesting story, if you're just a cool person that you think would have a good time on a Friday night and um, can control your F-bombs to some level, join us. What? I, thought that I said that, oh, to some have level. a limit, like, like 10 per episode. I, I did tell you that I cut... that we're like the Eddie Murphy of off-roading. We're supposed to be the biggest shit show. We're not supposed to be the most profane. Oh, oh so you can yeah. say shit as much as you want, but you can't say the F-bomb. Got it. But we'll try to refrain. Oh, I've said, no, we could say fuck. We could say, like, I'm not going <laughs> to. Friday nights are not necessarily for reserving funny? ourselves. What I'm saying is that um, it was oh, okay. 52. I had to, there was 52 total because I get a transcript on these and I have what? to look at it. Yeah, it was, a, it was a big night. It was a big night. <laughs> Which night? Oh, that must have uh, been was, we were You here. guys, you were not here for that show. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, I had to cut a lot of that show. All right. Um, Do you get so, a certain number before it becomes NC-17 on the uh, Apple podcast list? Or is no, it just they don't really, it's, it's just, it's either explicit or not. And uh it was really just more about, it felt like an Eddie Murphy concert. Listening to two live crew in front of your mom. It was rough, yeah. Like, And if you joined us for that show live, God bless you for uh, sticking around with us. Because, yeah, it was a two live crew show. Uh, it is now banned in 48 states. All right. Cool. So, yeah. So, right. yeah. Uh, we're tonight's roundtable is just uh, recovery gear and what's in your recovery bag, emergency bags. I grabbed my bag. You didn't have to grab your bag, but I wanted to start off with something really stupid and simple. This is a uh, jump. It's a car jump. So it's very simple. Oh, I can't, you can't see this. Um, it's very simple. It's just a small battery pack that's about a little bit bigger than my hand. Um, and then it's got jumper cables and a plug. It takes a couple minutes to get you charged up. Um, and if you're coming back from really low it might take a little bit longer but it's really good if you've managed to get yourself into a bind so that's my first thing uh jumper cables and something like this so i'm gonna start i'm gonna go around the table um we'll start with our guest aaron what's your first what's your first thing in a recovery bag first has always got to be a winch right okay uh, well, I hey, said recovery bag. Hey, uh, you know, oh, the recovery uh, bag. Well, I got let, the let's whole thing. Hey, JD, is there a guest trying to join right now? There is. Are they trying to uh, come jo in? That's Rubistina Josh. Oh, my God. Let him join. It'll be fun. <laughs> How did he get an import? <laughs> oh, oh there is a question. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, I see it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Uh, is he on his computer? Get him in here first. Because he needs to be on his oh computer. I don't think it works on the app. It's okay. Oh, is he trying to get through? Is he trying to get in on Instagram? Uh, no, he's no. nice, but he, oh. if he doesn't have the, he should have the option to um, ask a question or join and it should be at the bottom of the screen. But if he's on, if you're on your phone, Josh, it's not going to work. Um, unfortunately, uh, we don't have that ability yet. We're not cool. I'm limited. By, cool uh, I'm limited by Riverside and uh, they're all right. I mean, it's two weeks in a row for the media stuff, so I'm going to give it a go. Um, so, yeah, so I think, yeah, winch is definitely a thing that all of us I, at this point. Listen, you have a winch, right? Yeah. Okay. So, that's yeah, I think that's I a even, pretty universal. I'm even, thing. I even have plans to get a winch on the F-350. <laughs> so. What? Why? Uh, yeah. Where? Why? Because <laughs> you... I see people get stuck all the time. <laughs> And they don't have my Jeep to help him. He, he buys unnecessary things. Aaron can contest to this. Like it's like it's, I'm a it's worst why. influence for that too, and I'm sorry, but not <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the best worst influence. <laughs> he has a vested interest the in you spending trailer money. Trailer should have a winch on it, but there's no reason our truck should have a winch. That's so dumb. No, our truck definitely needs to have a winch. Well, at least like we're JD uh, answering your question. Like I always keep uh, a tow strap with me, um, static strap. Yeah. Um, I think. I mean. When I first started out, that got me through a lot of different recoveries. Um, and you could do a lot with a strap. I mean, you can use a tree saver, wrap it around a frame for a rollover. I mean, if you already got a winch, you know, it's just supplemental to that. Um, right. And, you know, if, if you're dead in the water, you need to be towed back to camp or something. That's going to help. So I can't really do that with a winch. Um, but definitely at minimum have a, a strap is, is my recommendation. 
Um, I've got a whole kit from Factor 55 that I use quite a bit, usually anytime we're at events. Um, I mean, ranging anything from a strap to soft shackles to uh, extra D rings and other recovery points like a hitch link. All right. This is, I, I realize now as I do this, this is just an excuse for me to clean out my recovery bag as I get the Jeep ready to go again. <laughs> yep, this good is, plan. That's all right. I'm good with it. Yeah. All right, cool. I, I probably need to go through mine, but for the most part, everything in this I've used um, frequently. Um, the thing's probably about 50 to 50 pounds or so. Uh, we had a rollover <laughs> at uh, Winter 4x4 on Papa Smurf, and I used probably just about <laughs> everything in this bag. Uh, so shout out to yeah. those guys actually making everything fit in there. That's crazy. It's awesome. Well, and, and, and that's, that's the th I mean, you did. You emptied out that bag basically to get this going. Yeah. Used everything except for that major uh, 30 foot strap. So, used all the soft shackles I had and tree saver to go around the frame. So. Yeah. Soft shackles are another thing. Basically, like somebody rolls over and then all of a sudden you see like this giant gangly guy like running to his vehicle to get his. Like, he's always there to help. That's around. one of those things. I know. You end up running and I'm like, oh, that looks like Aaron. Just We've also been in situations rock. where. We've been in situations where someone almost rolled. And then it's like, don't move at all. Yep. And we had to get him out of that situation without tipping the Jeep over the side of the Because <laughs> he was holding on by like half a bolt. <laughs> That's where straps and winches to other vehicles can come in real handy to keep shit from rolling. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's handy that's to awesome. have around for that. Around you guys. Hmm. Well, that's what everybody thinks. Well, so here's the funny thing is, as, as I was thinking this earlier, I'm like, you know, I know that I had plenty of Jeep problems before we started this podcast. Um, I, I feel like everybody else had plenty of vehicle problems, but you, it's not like the rest of you didn't like start having problems when we started doing this, right? Y'all had problems before that. <laughs> I want to make sure we're not like out. a bad influence for ourselves. Did we start yeah. this in August? Uh, when did we start? September, it? No. yeah, right around there. All right, well, shit. Is he yeah. recording or when he started talking about it in spring? Like... Oh, <laughs> see, Alyssa's going to was... way back machine. All right, yeah, that might be, that right. might be valid. All right, screwed myself no, over. No, we seem to be around a lot of it lately. I don't know what's happening. It's circling us, I would say. I think it's, just, I, I honestly, it feels seasonal. I think it's just that time of year. I think there's a lot of us who are still out there when we have our Jeeps doing stuff, but the masses aren't out there doing stuff. It's just the hardcore of us that really want to go. There was a rolling season that we just seem to come through. We and that I can't explain. Season. I can't explain why like four people with all, with all within the span of like, what, two weeks, three weeks? It was a lot of people. Like six within like three weeks. Oof. Like our friends in like different All areas, or yeah. the same area. Oh, okay. No, different no, people. No, from different areas, actually. Yeah. Wow. yeah. It was like, but a lot of them touched us in some way, so maybe we're the problem. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we're the problem. So we had Dustin and Dustin and them, and then we hung out with Julie like the week before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, are we the problem? We're the hot mess express. So I'm telling you, it was legacy crawlers, or it was Ray. It was it was like Ray crawlers was there because he was there all the time. <laughs> Ryan was there at all of the. Instances. I think it's just a statistical thing. I think it's just a statistical thing. But <laughs> I'm yeah. just kidding. You guys We're are probably one of the most active people I know when it comes to wheeling. So you're just happen to be there by coincidence. I think. Like I'm jealous <laughs> by the amount of wheeling you guys managed to pull off. Yeah, exactly. I do. And we don't get um, to do enough. As it is. No, me, I get to play. No, where's that LJ that Julie or that YJ Julie showed up <laughs> the last night? He's been literally looking at like vehicles just so that because we're going, we're doing Pritchett at um, EJS. We won't like. We're bringing the F three fifty on Pritchett. Let's no, go. we are not. <laughs> <laughs> it can that make it. There's this. <laughs> I will come There's with you. I don't want to do Pritchett, but I will come with you just to take video. I, I wish I was rich enough to yeah. do that and get away with it. <laughs> Maybe no, I can convince uh, Whistling recovery. Dixie to do that. That would yeah. be good. But there's a YJ in New York that's really, really, really stacked, but it's like super cool. And we could like make sure it was okay to check go that on frame. Pritchett. <laughs> <laughs> you got to check that frame. It's salt water. And yeah. I know. I'm just kidding. We've been looking at a lot of things. Something's going to happen someday. We're going to have a beater, but All right. well, maybe I need by to go. I plan on doing some wheeling in like April. So um, you guys need a Jeep so we can all go. I want to go someplace south. My Jeep will be probably good. 
right. in a couple weeks. I won't do anything Unless crazy. Unless Motobilt can get their shit together and get my cage ready, then I'm going to like go under the... I want to oh. be under the knife as much as possible while Pope's out so that when he's back, like... I'm just warning Motobilt. Let's just say if there was somebody in the room that wow. has anything to do with them... If, really? if only if that... they fall. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, I'm just a guy on a Friday on a podcast. I just got a VA having a drink with some yeah. yeah. hey. Totally. Yeah, Aaron's not getting paid to get chewed out by you right now. <laughs> if I'm not giving Aaron shit, he's worried that I'm mad at him. Uh, awesome. All right, Alyssa. Uh, do yeah. you, so you get a different set of needs. What do you bring? What's your number one recovery thing other than a winch? The number, I don't know. I always grab my toe straps and I grab my go treads. I have um, action mm. track traction boards on my, what's it called? My truck bed. Mm -hmm. The bed rack. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have those, but I also always grab my go treads. So <laughs> I, I have like extra sets of stuff. Um that actually it makes goes, a lot of sense because you run into that. Maybe do I have it? Sorry, I just had it. Ah. Are the go treads the ones garment. that fold? There you what? go. Yeah. 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 The go treads are the ones that like fold up into like a cube. Yeah, I met those guys. So they're great. Yeah, they're really cool. Um, their story is really cool too. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Cool. What yeah. is that little thing that you just showed us? My Garmin. It's the satellite phone Garmin thing. It's the but, inreach, that's right? awesome. Yeah, yeah, the in reach. This one's the mini. There's a bigger one that has like a keypad. It looks like a Blackberry. Um, but this one's just like basic. It connects to your phone with Bluetooth. And then there's an app that you download. And then you can use the app. And it has like maps and texting and other things and like location. Um, so if I text someone, I can choose to like add my location to it so they know exactly where I am. Or I can just send out a normal text. It's a little cheaper, but uh, yeah, <laughs> we have this and it does have, um, so even though it doesn't have a keypad, if you like lose your phone or if your phone is dead or whatever, it does have a whole alphabet. You just have to click up and down a lot to spell your words, um, but it's still usable. Like you're not stuck using your phone. Yeah. It's my little garment. There's cool. another brand out there. I can't remember the name of it. But there's another like satellite phone out there that's a little cheaper. Because you said that, now mm -hmm. I'm blanking on the name, and I have one, and I was just looking for it in my. It's like the the, I don't know. All I remember is it's like gray and green. Yeah, is the colors. I don't mine's remember. Mine's actually. I got the Jeep edition, and I Spot X. That's it. Mm, yeah. Uh, cool. So yeah, I have the Spot X. Uh, I have the two way messenger from Spot X. The nice part is, and I don't know if it's any cheaper. Um, there's. No. Their unit reminds me of a BlackBerry, which for my old self uh, is kind of cool. Um, mm -hmm. But it's honestly oh. just as expensive. Um, and okay. the only difference is I don't think they charge you for messages per message. You get unlimited back and forth. But you do it okay. through their device. And it's a more expensive device. Oh, okay. But they're pretty good oh, about the a warranty. I'm thinking, the one I'm thinking of is called Zoleo. Or Zaleo. Oh yeah, they're a new one. They're big on the tethering. Yeah, like that, like the smaller devices that tether to your phone. Yeah, yeah, it's just a straight up box, so you like have to use an one. I see yeah. the Spotix one you have. It does look exactly like a BlackBerry. It's like a BlackBerry <laughs> with an eight bit yeah. screen. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it's like um, orange and black, so it's like caterpillars, mm -hmm. BlackBerry. Yep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly. It's it's fun. Um, I will say this about them. They're pretty good about their warranty. Um, I contacted them because mine wouldn't charge anymore. The little USB connector at the bottom had broken. And they charged me like, I think it was 50 or 60 bucks total. Uh, and that was shipping and sending out a new unit. It's a $300 unit. So it was nice mm -hmm. for them. So shout That's out to fun. them for that. Yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. And I because I know Lily and since Lily and Jason are not here, we can talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. There are plenty <laughs> of us who wheel alone. Uh, we don't necessarily always have a lot of, uh, you know, the opportunity to have other folks with us or uh, mm -hmm. scheduling, whatever else it is. Um, if you're going to wheel alone though, make sure that one of the things you have is a way to contact civilization. Don't go out there in the middle of nowhere. So if it's an iPhone that you have a satellite plan on, or if it's the Garmin inReach or the Zolio or the Spot X, whatever it is, just make it something and tell somebody where you're going. So those are our disclaimers if you're going to go yeah. out by yourself. Oh, all right. Where did, uh, did we lose Randy and Pope? No. No? Okay. Lost video. Um, was our video off? 
Um, That's okay. Video. It'll be You're there. Work on. Yeah, it'll be there. I'm, I'm still eating pizza, so I turn off the camera so you don't have to watch me eat. <laughs> you know what? We all appreciate that. Um, I'm jealous. <laughs> let's see. I got a tire iron in here. Um, honestly, I still carry regular D rings. Um, I love soft shackles, and I think that they've got plenty of places, but I think every once in a while you still just, you're going to need something else. We usually attach soft shackles to the D-rings. It's a shortcut. I have a feeling if you come on the show, don't come on the show with the Colorado Rescue guys and say that. I don't think they're they're going to like that. We always do that because the, because the, 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 uh, the D-rings are usually rated for like 40,000 pounds. The soft shackles are rated for like 32. So... The D-ring breaks off the bumper, you're fucked. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's just an excuse to buy a new bumper. So We always carry our uh, kinetic rope on the trail. We've actually dragged a red gladiator from a certain person all the way through double semi with this kinetic rope before. <laughs> so, for somebody, so for somebody who's never used a kinetic rope before, what does it do for you? It's, it's okay, so similar to a tow rope, but instead of like jerking and, and snapping you, it kind of builds up the energy and it kind of stretches out like a rubber band. And when it gets out as far as it's going to do, it gives you a little tug to get you out of whatever you're in. And it does it in a much more gentle way than like a chain or a regular tow rope would do. Now, I right. don't know if it's the best thing for towing someone a very far distance, but I watched Matt from Latin Soft Road Recovery do it a lot, and I've done it quite a few times. But my rope is almost worn to shit from doing that a lot, so I need to get a new one. Because they, end up, one. they end up dragging on the ground when you do that. Yeah. Um, that's probably the main reason not to use it for that, but I, I love it for getting people stuck at it. We use them too, so they end up yeah, 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 that's that's we use it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we use it a lot, though. We use it, we've used ours a ton. Yeah, and it's almost time for us to get a new one anyway for the, at least replace the orange one that we use a lot because it's been dragged on the ground a lot. And it's oh, been three one. years, well, three years of pulling people that out. We never used because we always use yours. Until I've noticed that the recovery gear in the last years has gotten a lot safer, but it's also got a shorter lifespan because of the materials they need to make it. But... And I wouldn't say that those are safer. Like when, like when you talk about your winch cable being like your synthetic winch lines that just drops to the ground. That does not happen with these ropes. If they break, it's like the rubber band is going to fling whatever the hell it was attached to back at you. Um, if you were watching the off-road record games last year, that's one of the things that happened. It snapped off and hit the mirror of the truck that was towing it and smashed into it. So Oof, good times. Broke the mirror. Off. A lot of energy behind. So it's kind that. of a, yeah. There's a lot of energy story. Brian on Instagram uh, described it as a big bungee cord, essentially. Yep. Or a big. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's appropriate. Mm-hmm. Yep, big bungee cord is exactly what it he is. Also, uh, he also mentioned uh, his uh, number one thing is a effing spare tire. <laughs> and uh, you know what? I feel like that's that's valid. And if you're, especially if you're like going out with other people. But if you are going out with other people, make sure somebody is going to spot your tire. Don't expect somebody else just to do it because you didn't prepare yourself. We bring tire plugs for most situations that'll get you off the trail. Yeah. I wouldn't drive on yeah. the highway on them, but... We can usually fix like a, 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 a hole in a sidewall or a hole in the bottom of your tire. See, and you're like saying that. bring a spare yeah. tire, but we're trying to figure out how we can have tires on a trailer and not have a spare tire and have lots of plugs. Yeah. And so tire plugs patches. and knowing how to use the <laughs> tire plugs and patches is basically our, this will get us off the trail until we get our Jeeps to the spare tires that are on the trailer. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the plan. I, I mean, even if you're can, just on terrain or an angle that you can't swap a tire, you have to do Yeah, something. there's that too. Yep, yep, that happens a lot, actually. More often than not, when we're on this stuff, you can't really change the tire. Yeah. All right. Going so off this of one... the changing tire thing, though, um, there's a women's group that I go out with, um, Ladies Overnight Campout, I think is the name. But for like the last couple of years, um, Jillian was in charge of it. And Jillian Becca, um, she required all of us to do a tire change challenge at home. And that was the only way that you could attend her events. So that's cool. And it cool. wasn't, yeah. yeah. And she was like, I figured you all know how to change tires. Like, you know, the steps, but can your stuff actually do it? Like now that you've had a lift and a bigger tire size and all this stuff, can your, do you like, actually Jack have the stuff to do it? Do that's it? a good idea. Yeah, yeah. So you have to do it to show that like, yeah, you are bringing the right equipment and not your old equipment. That's too short or not strong or whatever. Well, and that's another tool we have is the pro Eagle Jack. And to be honest with you, that's been one of the best tools we've used that. Mm -hmm. 
like we have a lot of crap in our stuff. I always say that we have everything you everything you could possibly need, but what you have and what you need, because <laughs> that's kind of who we are. Always. We bring a ton of crap, but I would say one of the number one things we use is our pro Eagle Jack, especially because we go to a lot of events and everybody's breaking and yeah. they're fixing things in other, in like you're either fixing them in your garage, garage or parking, or parking lot. lot. Or yeah, exactly. You're using it to lift up a Jeep on the trail that you need to do something to the tire with. Yeah. We've used it on the trail multiple times. It's which was really surprising. Yeah. And so I would say that's probably my favorite because it's not like a high lift jack or like anything like that. It's like you could literally, we've, I mean, we've used it before to test certain things. We have another friend with a high lift jack and you can bring the whole back end up and you can spin tires and do all kinds of things. So yeah. Do you have like the floor jack or do you have the CO2 like style jack? From the floor jack style. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so you That's got a cool. lot of. I don't have the space for that, so I I want. Um, there's a a company called. Oh, good lord! It's on my other computer. Um, it's some sort of Mojab something Industries, and they make uh, gear out of Utah someplace, and they've got a much less expensive version of the hydraulic jack. And I saw it yesterday, and I'm eyeballing it because that's it's that's high on my list. I have a high lift. Um, but I've said before, I'm, I'm a little broken at this point and I don't want to do it if I don't have to. They call them a widow maker that, for the reason, right? Yeah. Yeah. The high yeah. jack scares me. I, think, I feel like it's a death trap. It is a death mm -hmm. trap. It is. Uh, you, I mean, you really got to know what you're doing with it and when to use it and how to use it properly. Um, I think a lot of people get it because they see them on Jeep hoods and they're like, oh, I need to have one of those. So they get Did one and then they get themselves freezes. stuck and they Maybe try to use it. And that's when trouble hurt when that's when trouble really happens. So, yeah. All right, cool. Um, so really quick, this one is regional. I have, in the spring, I'll actually carry something more substantial, uh, but later in the year and just kind of in general, um, I carry, this is just a pulse saw. All it is mm. is just a giant chain. And then it's got teeth like a chainsaw. And so you're gonna put that around a tree trunk or something like that to get out of your way. Um, I actually have used this uh, and a couple of other tools and my winch and some D-rings and some other stuff to move some debris after we had a lot of storms here last year. So um, that's that's kind of like the action tracks for you, Alyssa, where that's really a regional thing based on where you typically wheel. Like you really need something to oh, help yeah. you with mud and stuff like that. This is because we have a lot of forest and tree cover and regularly have tree fell that we need to clear in order to keep going down the road. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, and oh, we sorry. have a lot of friends that break, so we need bring high left jacks because that's you what guys, happens yeah. around us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you mean uh, floor jacks? The floor jacks. Yeah, floor jacks. I'm floor just jacks kidding. Is a, that's a lot easier of a time and than the, dealing with the bottle off jacks or the cool. rest. Yeah, the off road one is cool. The the hydraulic jack that um, that you're talking about, and there's like a few different models of it. I've wanted to look at one of those and see how. They would it's feel just, to use it's one really on steep Jeep, price yeah, though. Cool. Like I mean, one of them is like eight hundred. Yeah. Uh, and if yeah. you can get the Badlands off road jack, several hundred. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was expensive. You can yeah, get I've the Badlands one for one cheap. Too. Do they weigh really the same though? The... It's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, this one might be controversial, um, and I might get hate for it. I don't really care. <laughs> oh man, but, uh, what's it, the number? What'd you say? <laughs> You give them the phone number. Oh, yeah. Uh, 719-408-0132. Uh, you guys know I'm looking at the uh, Instagram comments. I'm sure I'm going to get shit about it. Um, but, yeah, I so I stopped carrying this because I felt like I felt like a fraud. And then I had a situation where this would have been the perfect thing to save me a half a day worth of heavy labor and could have just got me to a shop to do the work. Um, so, this is very dependent on the type of tire injury, if you will. You know, they, the, they have the glue treads and stuff out there for the sidewall repairs. This is just for like a little puncture uh, and you just, you need to try to fix it to get yourself off the trail. Any kind of a puncture you're going to notice on the trail, you don't want to drive too long on this stuff. Um, and full disclosure, the people at Discount Tire will hate you for bringing this shit to them. Yeah. It just coats the inside of the tire. It's very sticky. Um, I have my old TJ rims, and they still have some stuff from back in the day on them. So and There's also $10, $10 tire plugs, I'm just saying. <laughs> and there are $10 <laughs> tire plugs, too. Anybody got a preference on winch line type? Like, do you 
care about if it's steel or synthetic? Do you have a preference for you, synthetic only? Yeah. For the longest time, I was running uh, steel cable, um, and that specifically had to do with the environment that I was in. Uh, when I lived in Washington, I was a firm believer in steel cable because of all the abrasion uh, from mm -hmm. like trees or mud or whatever I was in up there, uh, like sand or uh, things like that, too. Um, but synthetic line is uh, what I've swapped over to um, simply because I'm not in those same situations and my kit allows me not to have to worry about the abrasions anymore. That's cool. You, you have no sound, JD. You were muted or something, JD. I was. I muted myself. Alyssa, do you have a preference? I mean, mine's you, synthetic. And just just I, because. Why? I just remember like it was probably better and safer, so it was and easier to take care of. Yeah. yeah, synthetic. The difference is it doesn't a, store a lot of energy. Pros over over steel cable. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, steel cable for the only thing that really, in my mind, that's that's still better than synthetic is UV resistant. Right? It's not going to go bad from sitting out in the sun out in your driveway. Yeah, exactly. Or but and that's a I mean, that's a problem I've had. I keep having to replace cables just because it sits in the sun. I, I you you get the get the covers, but the covers eat through eventually too. So yeah, yeah, the synthetic ones are people have their. Their uh, shackles hanging off their bumpers with a big floppy synthetic line just drying out. It just kills me. It's like, well, that's not going to be safe when you actually need it. Yep. Yep. Oh, mine's been sitting for six months, so it's on the slate to get replaced. So. Hey, <laughs> Josh, what's up, man? Oh, they're getting a hamburger for their dog. That's what they're doing. No, no, not tonight. <laughs> Are you at McDonald's? Yeah. I am not. I'm, I'm in the parking lot of my grandmother's McDonald's? place. Oh. No, Starbucks. no McDonald's tonight. Rosie's not getting a burger tonight. <laughs> so Poor do you dog. guys know Josh? I have met Josh one time. I'm a celebrity. Everybody knows me. <laughs> you should put your Instagram down <laughs> there. What's up, oh, guys? How is everyone? He calls people back, right? Uh, uh, once he starts I'm... calling, he doesn't stop. Oh, I see. <laughs> Sorry, you're going to see me give crap tonight, JD. Like, you are always like, Randy only is nice to people. But the, you've met, <laughs> these are two people that I have no problem giving shit to. No, it's fantastic. Like, I need to start leaving more guest booking to you. I mean, that's what I'm going to do from now on. <laughs> <laughs> He's, on He's got buttons. And they're really easy. They, like, flash. And then you just, like, push. <laughs> Hi, Josh. Well, thanks for taking a bit of Josh. Did Randy send you the link? Uh, I sent him the link. I, actually, ah, there you go. yep, it's his fault. Blame him later. He's oh, like, no, I don't want to be on the camera. I'm like, that's fine. And then he decided to join anyway. <laughs> well, see, the, well, we got like we have like four people that watch us. You're fine. Like, so, in fact, I think we have two viewers right now, and you're probably one of them. I'm one of them. <laughs> nice. So, Josh, introduce yourself for the audience. Uh, well, for the other person that's watching, I'm, I'm Josh, and I. <laughs> and my, my Jeep is the Rubistina. Um, and Christina is inside right now with her grandmother. I'm, I'm in the parking lot by myself. So she might All come right. out. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm probably does she know you're hiding one. in the car? She does, does she not. I told her I was going to get my bag and my laptop and my computer <laughs> and I was going to be right back. <laughs> and then I just, I was like, you know what? It's way, there's way too many people up there. I'm just going to join here. It's probably safer. All right. I'll give I don't know what you. I'm going to say. They don't need to hear it. <laughs> Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> We've already broken the floodgates on swearing, though, so you're fine. If you you, if um, you get to let something fly, you're good. You're amongst friends. Yep. Sounds good. I don't know how many F-bombs we're up to. I think it's like four or five. I think we're... I don't ever really worry about it when it's this group. I, I'm going to be honest about that. It's... Uh, <laughs> It, it really I worry is. about it when Jason's here. I don't want to offend Jason. By not swearing? I guess, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so to make sure we got that right. Like, I think that's the only way you can offend him, by not joining him. Yeah, awesome. Uh, All right, cool. Josh, what do you put in your recovery gear? Recovery What's your gear. number one thing? Uh, other than a winch. Um, that's what we were talking winch. about before you came in. Right. It's Actually, true. I know what I'm glad that he has in his recovery gear because he saved our asses. He has every bolt you can imagine. Oh, uh -huh. oh. That, that's true. You know what else I have? I have one of those PSC elbows that uh, Pat needed that day, and I hmm. completely <laughs> forgot. And it, yeah, yeah. So I have that too. What's my Josh number one brings thing? a lot of useless things that are very, very useful a lot. Right. They're useless until they're not. I have a bottle jack with a swag axle cradle welded to it. I think that's pretty cool. So it just literally fits right underneath the axle and you can jack it up and you don't have to mess with a big high lift or a floor jack or anything like that. I mean, that's <laughs> that's something you could market that. I think you should market that. That's something I would buy. There, Yeah, I love it. And now you've given it away on live radio. But luckily, again, we only have two people that watch us, so you're good. <laughs> it's all good. You know what? If I help one person, cool. <laughs> 
Why not? There you go. Awesome. Uh, Practice anything... more than once, Josh. Uh, what else do I have? It's true. I have track bar bolts. Yep. Yep. And, and they, <laughs> I feel like that's a good viral videos when we put them in. <laughs> it's almost it's a three million, million man. <laughs> we have a right three million reel Pope of Pope him Pope. fixing Pope's Jeep. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. In fact, is there a way that you can play that for the audience? Because I think they need I, can... I don't know if you want Rain to. Do it, no, but you. You, oh, you will know from, they will tell you that I am not great at pulling this shit off on the, on the fly, but we'll try to do it here. You keep talking. I'll get to it. Sweet. Isn't it tagged or pinned? I think it's one of the top two or three on my page right now. You pinned I'm it. I'm going there right he now. You pinned Josh fixing our Jeep at the top of our page. Yeah, it's basically like if it was raining boobies. <laughs> oh, here. Let him just play it. It's his favorite. Hang on. I Does anybody it. else's Instagram break today, by the way? Because mine was broken for most of the day. Mine yelled at me and told me that I was a bot and oh. stuff. Uh, mine, mine not only told me I was a bot, but it wouldn't let me log in. So, yeah, it's pinned on my profile. I don't have... I don't think I can log in Instagram. You know, from here. I, I gotta say, Alyssa, I was wondering yeah. if your number one recovery gear thing. Oh, here it is. Heard like half yeah, of what you said. Yeah. You ever had one of them days your luck was so bad that if it was raining boobies, you'd get hit right between the eyes with a pecker? You ever had one wow. of them days your luck was. <laughs> <laughs> and that's yep, the way the just... world got to know Josh. That, yeah, there you go. That's awesome. No, they, they already knew. <laughs> that's right? at 3.2 million right now that's the second most viewed reel of all time on our page one of the oh 50 gosh. times that weekend that josh was wrenching on misfit because he was a piece of shit and misfit showed up to trail hero and every bolt fell out <laughs> that josh put in or you did no josh, no, josh, josh <laughs> <just uncovered. laughs> I, to, I had to clarify i wanted to make sure no, I no. Like the first, it's the one fixing it. The first three days we were reassembling Misfit, and then <laughs> after that it was a solid ride for the rest of Trail Hero. Our problem, child. That's a problem. Oh so random ass thing, uh, and maybe Josh, do you carry you carry zip ties? Please tell me. Zip ties? Oh, oh I, yeah. I just I looked and steel zip ties. What did you yeah, say? That's not what I thought I carry, he was holding. I carry steel zip ties. <laughs> that's not what I thought he was holding either. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I really think my microphone is more phallic than that, but all right. Not from this view. Not, the angle was right. No, it gets really bad. You start doing stuff, it gets, it's not good. Um, <laughs> So yeah, steel K uh, steel zip ties are probably better. And actually, now that you say it, I should probably make a point of swapping those out for steel. That's gonna be a lot. Sell them in Home else. Depot; they're great. You can get ten pack. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, again, it's, we're talking about stuff that gets you to the trailer or to the end of the trailer, where you can get cell phone service, something that will get you decent. You, you know what? Um, I carry a glue tread kit for sidewall repair. And that is probably my number one outside of like standard tools that I have with us at all times. Have Love any that. of you ever used it? Because I have uh, a kit, but I've never had to open it. I have not. Okay. I really want to. But guys... have you but ever had? Really. We've used the Maybe tire plugs bad, on but... on a trailer. We yeah. used the tire plugs before. Uh, we we just got off a trail, um, up the Daniel Summit, and then we found uh, there was a guy with a motorhome type thing off the side. It was actually like a fifth wheeler type thing and he didn't, he had a flat tire, no spare. And so we just gave him the tire plugs and we helped him get the, use the tire plug and the easy, and the easy plate. I think he used like 10. To, it was a huge uh, hole. <laughs> I think he used like two or three to oh fill God. it. But uh, he used the tire plugs to get it and it got him over down, down the road to the next shop where he was able to get a real spare tire or get it really replaced. But yeah, it's common. I've only had to use it, guys, but I use haven't it. used it on my own tire yet. If you ever with the rev kit guys, you'll use your entire pack of. Uh, <laughs> 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 Sorry, we learned that when we were uh, up on Red Cone. <laughs> yeah, Colorado. Yep. That was a fun yeah, but day. then you can call them, and they usually have parts too, because yeah. that's how that's, we got that part for Pat was the, the rev entire guys. CSC kit with them that day that uh, uh -huh. Pat broke his ninety degree <laughs> fitting on. All right. I still can't believe oh, I had we, one of those we, fittings we in my bag you, and I forgot it. We, we can't hear you. I muted myself because I, I had to burp because I'm on. Uh... <laughs> Let's see. I don't even know what beer this is. I started putting my empties in different places. All right. <laughs> cool. What else we got here? I have a, like, this is kind of getting into the emergency side of things, but I do carry a survival kit. Um, just kind of band-aids, uh, whistles, uh, paracord, uh, 
knife, uh, flint, that kind of stuff. There's an e-blanket in here too, which I don't necessarily know how the great those are, but in an emergency, it is what it is, right? Yeah, I have one, and then I also have a dog one. I have a really cool dog kit that's really nice because it's got like, um, yeah, it's just nice to have it because it's got like like snake venom stuff and like all that kind of stuff so if anybody needs dog things does it have like the mm. little backpack too or like easy carrier if he hurts himself it's like yeah it's a little backpack yeah. thing that you can snap onto like things it's got like a little snap thing so you can put it on all oh. kinds of things no i think i know what Alyssa's cool. talking about uh you're talking about like oh. a sling right like where you the dog sling where like, you can carry yeah. them oh yeah easily it has over a your dog shoulder okay. and it has like benadryl in there and a snake bite thing and it has just a bunch a surprisingly of surprisingly easy stuff. one to have yeah yeah mm -hmm. but it's i mean like box. it's just all for yeah i have been a drill all the time but mm -hmm. it's just nice having the dog stuff that they might need like for and then they have like bandages for them for like different things and stuff like that i will get the name of that, that later good. we'll put it in the show notes because yeah. i need something like that too is it the phyto it's one just or is it a different I can't remember what brand it is. It's just always in Jem's back thing where all of my first aid stuff is. I always have it back there. Yeah. It doesn't really leave. No, there's a, there's yeah. a couple on Amazon that I saw when I searched for something like that the last time. So no, right. if... there's so many. Yeah. But it's good. Like there's always someone with the dog on a trail too, even if you don't bring your. Yeah, I always yeah exactly. Have treats and bowls and Me everything. Too. And my dog's <laughs> usually not on the hard trails. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have a dog bowl in my back door. I have treats in my glove box. Like <laughs> those collapsible I have a ones for the trail are really yeah, are, yeah that's all. I have like four yeah. collapsible ones in like that's different cubby holes in my. Yeah, if we're not camping, those are the ones I use. So because mm -hmm. they're easier to just kind of stow away and then put it, you know, up above. And I've got a little rack over the back cab, and it's pretty much just all stuff for the dog. So it, there's not a whole lot of space up there, and he doesn't need a whole lot, but. Yeah, I really like the idea of having an animal emergency kit. I I know I'd thought about it before, but it's one of those things that you kind of, sometimes you forget about the simple stuff. Cool. Ooh, All right, I have a question got? off of that, just like sure. general for yeah. everyone. Um, do you guys seatbelt your dogs in the car? And yes. if and yeah. when you do obstacles, do you have your dogs in the car? There's no judgment. <laughs> I, I'm no. just like honestly asking. No, <clears throat> no dogs yeah. in the car. Okay. Usually, it depends on the dog. Like Moose doesn't like we usually don't seatbelt them. Although the last time I didn't seatbelt Dottie in the car was when I rolled my Jeep and I was really mad that she was even in the Jeep when I rolled it. It depends on the situation. Moose yeah. is. Yeah. yeah I think better. actually, I, I think that's actually the true is that we were better that she wasn't because she was just able to jump right out the window and not get hurt at all. Other than smashing her face on what she couldn't see what the ground was. It was traumatic, but yeah. I would say like any time that any, like they're in any sort of danger at all. They're out of the Jeep. Yeah. The, so normally on an obstacle, no, no, no dog in the Jeep. Some of our videos, you can hear Moose is sitting there screaming over and over again. Cause Randy's doing something. Yeah. But, and if we're on a trail know. that, I mean, <laughs> what was that? My dog foams at the mouth. He, he loves going over obstacles. Like uh, I mean, he's gone over middle monkey with me. I mean, I won't take him on everything. <laughs> mind you, but, uh, there there are some reason, right. well, I'll just leave him in. I know the Jeep's going to do just right. fine. And it's not. Yeah. Much, but. I, that's kind of the boat I'm into. I don't typically do, uh, I don't typically do obstacles that are hard that are too difficult. I would all, I, I would expect, I know what my vehicle is going to do in almost all of those situations. I do not some on the highway. I will, um, on kind of low speed roads. I probably will, uh, seatbelt him in, but if we're crawling, I wouldn't want to have him locked in. If I can't, if I can't have him outside of the vehicle, I'd rather have him free to get out and get free. Um, uh, and typically that means windows are open while we're doing that kind of stuff, all that jazz. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's very situational. I think it's, it depends on where you're at. And the thing that bothers me about them, about those is I don't, I don't know what's the safest. I don't know if it's the harness with the leash, you know, in the back, um, or if that's just going to pin them in a weird way. And it, there's just, everybody's got a different opinion about, you know, what can happen in an emergency. And the honest to God truth is everything can happen in an emergency. So all you can do is prepare for the best. Yeah. Right? yeah we just have learned that if we're going to go out on anything that's harder than a five then moose gets to stay home because mom needs to worry about what's going on in front of her and <laughs> for sure. yeah moose loves to ride on her lap or even stick his head out the window while we're driving 
And, and he he's... loves to get, like, the leaves and things like that. Like, he loves it. Like, he actually really, really enjoys it. But if we're doing anything harder than a five, I need to be able to concentrate and not yeah. worry about him. So I just know my dog's personality. He <laughs> did not do red cone with me. He was not there with me that day. I needed to focus <laughs> on red cone. So... He might go back with me now, now that I've been. But Well, and Aaron's dogs love it, and they're really good outside of the Jeep, and, like, they really, like, like they're <laughs> trained to do kind of what's happening. I mean, my little well, listen is kind of, but let it's you, good. Let you work. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, they've been around it long enough. One of them knows, like, the sound specifically to the Jeep keys, and so as soon as I grab those, he's already oh, yeah. waiting by the door. So yeah. he's, he's nuts. I mean, your dogs don't get in the way of people. They're not, we're not, we're not, like afraid we're gonna run them over there's some people yeah. who bring their dogs on the trail and let them sit in the middle of the obstacle or driving on it um you yeah. know that was one thing that happened to us at winter or at uh, trail hero oh, so yeah uh what, what do we call that guy old blue <laughs> yeah <laughs> dog, the guy, Josh, like, Josh remembers well, that guy too it's the only time i've ever yelled at somebody at trail hero who was a, who was a guide because i'm like <laughs> if your dog is in the way while i'm on that obstacle he's not gonna you know, if I can't get up there safely, I'm running your dog over. You know, it's, very, you know, it's, it's an unfortunate like, conversation to have. Yeah, like yeah. I'm like, if I if I have to choose between my own safety and the safety of your dog that you should be watching, I'm choosing my own safety or my vehicle not getting. Well, I almost hit it, and I was really pissed. Yeah, Randy almost. Hit I it. would probably like jack myself up to save a dog so get your dog out of my way yeah. because yeah. i'm gonna stop and flip because your dog's right there because out there is a situation i don't like to lose my cool i don't like to get mad like yeah. that normally no. well, and you don't want to that... take when you're in the middle of an obstacle right yeah exactly yeah. yeah well and i'm not very happy when i'm going to injure somebody and i get really like i'm very rarely like bitchy and these guys can usually contest to that but when i'm gonna hurt your dog then i'm not gonna be a very good person it's mm -hmm. fair i feel like that's yeah. a fair one and it's not the dog yeah. thing if someone no, like exactly. the person steps in front of you it's their fault but yeah you know, the dog doesn't know exactly Aaron, um so you're you're currently in utah you were in washington before yep it, you carry different stuff now because you where you wheel now for most of the time primarily my kit pretty much has stayed the same um it's just kind of grown um just naturally as you know, money flows in, um, but <laughs> yeah, that's as, usually how it as works, changes, right? Uh, for the most part, um, it's just got more advanced. I would say, like, I had really basic, cheap stuff, and you know, that doesn't last like the premium like, stuff right. out there. Um, and especially as I move to more synthetic lines, you know, there's different tools that I get, and you know, I'm going to use that as a segue to kind of talk about a cool little tool that um, Factor 55 has. Um, it's just a little tiny thing slipped. I mean, it's thin I and mean, I slip this into my kit all the time and it's their, uh, it's their fast fit. So everybody with like synthetic line and if you break it, it's just like a little quick little rope fixer. Basically you just two pieces and it's funny enough. I used to be an electrician. That's my, my family business, but this is just like grabbing a, uh, some wire basically to try to feed it through something. It just grabs your synthetic line and the fast fit, I don't know how well you can see it. It's like chopsticks, right? You can push yeah, that yeah. through your synthetic line. It's actually got, uh, you might be able to see the markings on there too. It tells you pretty much how much to feed into your synthetic line to fix it. And then you just stream it through. And so this has actually come in handy a few times when guys have snapped their lines and, and needed a quick trail repair. So, all right that's well, awesome that's like that to our know, list just, yeah um, little advanced things that i add to the kit when i can and um ends up working out but that, that's a side note uh, i'm curious i'm, I'm going to ask this question before i put through my opinion out there uh thoughts on cleaning synthetic lines is definitely worth it? should be done especially okay. if you're in like muddy or sandy environment mm -hmm. i've never had to clean my winch line because you never you shouldn't have to, have to. <laughs> yeah so you don't use it <laughs> oh I used What's to play when I had it? to rescue your ass. <laughs> you and, oh. you... <laughs> and I added a factor 55 uh, hitch receiver thing because I, after using yours to pull you off trail. It worked pretty good. <laughs> that that's that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> that's yeah. fantastic. I mean, after this last trip uh, down to San Hollow and that muddy trip on Tokerville, 
I should probably spray mine. I mean, I usually am pretty good about cleaning it out at, at car washes or whatever, but for the most yeah. part, like actually like kind of pushing it together and getting that debris out of itself, because that'll work it itself into the fibers and you start cutting strands and that just derates your line. So it, it definitely yeah. should be something that people should do at least once a year. And if you never listen, if you, year. if you're listening, um, I'll find a video of it and attach to the show notes, but just go to YouTube and um, it's a pretty simple process. You just get yourself a five gallon bucket and some water and you just kind of feed it through and some soap and start working, uh, get the thread to open up and, um, Otherwise, just replace it on a regular basis. Make sure that you're doing that. One of the two, if not both. So it's cool. Right. Uh, I'm so hammered right now. I keep thinking I've <laughs> got to fix it. <laughs> I need to make another drink, but I've got to go downstairs for that. Uh, we got a replacement for Randy's winch line. No, we did get a replacement. It's actually for Misfits, but Misfits never going to be driven again. So that's hers now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. A reflective Dang. rope. It's got like a. What was that? Warren has a. I think they're they call it their nightline or whatever. But there's a reflective strand that's actually put in it, and that's actually Ooh, coming no. really handy at night. Um, I mean, you can't see a damn thing usually, and so any bit of light is going to hit that, and just it, you'll know. I mean, you're not going to clothesline yourself out there. <laughs> which that's cool. That's nice. before, but. I mean, it's little things, right? Like, and we probably yeah. should have mentioned that. You should probably have a flashlight yep. in your recovery bag. And if you're... Probably batteries, too. Well, yeah, one of my favorite I, I things to that. have in our kit, <laughs> if you're wheeling in the summertime in the desert, a black light so you can see the scorpions while you pee <laughs> is, like, the best idea ever, just so you know. Like, I mean, it sounds weird, but, like, if you spend a lot of time in the desert and in the summertime, it's usually nighttime. It will be your best friend. In Sand Hollow at night, every <laughs> bush <laughs> has a family of scorpions living underneath. Yeah. Don't pee yep. by bushes in Sand yep. Hollow in the summer. Like, that's just not a good idea. Can they jump? No. Nah. Like scorpions they jump? actually... I've spent enough time now watching them. They don't want to have anything to do with you. So if you come around, they'll probably dig down. It's just more of like... Mm -hmm. I don't, you don't you. want to sneak up on the big one. The, have, we will had, they? We had a big one chase. chase oh, yeah. Us. Yeah, the big one. Poking at it. Stuff. If you make it mad. <laughs> Were you instigating? Yeah, I said that's where it is. Well, Alyssa no, probably one of our friends' like, kids. Uh, was it trail? <clears throat> was it trail hunters kids? Yeah, she like her little boy is oh, so no. cute, yeah. but he was yeah. so excited when he found out the black light, and it was like 110 degrees that day, and so it was yeah. really hot. And then it was nighttime, and we were like literally you took the black light and put it up and it was like hundreds of them. Like it was crazy how much was out there. And he was in heaven with a stick just poking at every giant one he could find. <laughs> and it was hilarious. Like he's like, I was poking them all. There was one about the size of my hand that started chasing. Oh after. my gosh. It was so crazy. It was so crazy. At some there was point, a lot just of kind of done with it. <laughs> so we saw one this weekend outside of Havasu and it was, it's probably in the fifties and we, I'm sure there were more. Oh, wow. We don't blacklight things because that's scary. <laughs> but we, <laughs> we had to move a, a boulder because we had a Prius with us. So we had to move the boulder for the Prius. When we moved it, there was like a little scorpion under it. We're like, hi, buddy. But yeah, we just saw one on Saturday, Sunday. They usually want to have They're nothing to do with you. So they don't scare me that much yeah. because they usually mm -hmm. would go the other direction. No, oh, and I was going to say, no. I listened to a podcast on scorpions this weekend, just like randomly. And I remember the lady said they don't jump, which I thought was interesting because I thought they did, but I guess it's just me. <laughs> you know, You're your jumping. House. They're not. I'm jumping and running. Either way, I wouldn't want to squat in my by bathroom. one. I'm not. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, we get them in our house this year sometimes. Ooh, that's fun. Yeah. Depending on your neighborhood, you you need to check like your shoes before you put your shoes on. Yeah, nope. I would just like store my shoes some in like a lockbox. Like I don't think I don't think I can handle that. <laughs> mm -mm. All right. Cool. Uh, Josh, anything special you carry based on where you wheel? Um, you wheel everywhere, right? You do a lot. You're doing yeah. Colorado and Utah, and you're kind of doing a mix of like the desert and the forest. I do everything. Yeah. Now, I mean, nothing aside from what we've already mentioned, really. Uh, I got a good question. What's the one thing you carried with you the first times you came out that you is now you realize was useless and is just either collecting dust or you had to sell to somebody else? Huh, a high lift. <laughs> That's exactly what I just thought too. 
I have that same answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I bought one because I, I thought that, you know, they were cool and they were good. And then I realized that they weren't. And I, I got rid of it. And now I have a bottle jack with an axle cradle on it. And gave, it works great. I gave mine to one of our one of our friends and slash trail guides at, at uh, what's the name of the place? Moab Outlaws. Yeah. Or outlaw, okay. whatever the hell they are. Yeah. <laughs> outlaw tour. I don't like, remember their name anymore. He's like, do you want that? So I gave it to him as a basically one day because I was like, I don't want this thing anymore. <laughs> and you, he, he said he would take it. So I'm like, here, go for it. Uh, yeah, that's All funny. Right. I can't remember. Yeah, I gave ours it's away. a food ornament. You know, I, I was trying to think about that, but everything that I've had, like, I've always bought with a purpose and and done like a lot of research on. But there was one thing that I was about to chuck out of my kit, and it was like a like this absurd like sword looking thing that had a saw on the back of it. And I was like, you know, I never know. Like I'm going to run into a cougar or something, you know, and just maybe just have this. But I ended up <laughs> using that when I rolled because I rolled into a tree off this massive obstacle and <laughs> I needed to actually saw the the limbs away to pull the Jeep out of the tree. Yep. Um, that was actually mm -hmm. just in the Jeep at a coincidence. And it was very close to being just getting chucked in the garbage. I had that since i got my old cj years and years ago so nice um yeah nothing that comes off the top of my mind really okay high lift yeah if i had one that would have been gone pretty quick <laughs> i now feel alone in my high lift island so fine that's all right i can deal with it they do have their purpose though i mean you could do some crazy stuff with high lifts i mean i've used one as a winch before um yeah it's just I don't know. Don't like to get slapped in the face with them. That's for sure. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any other major questions. Anybody have anything else they want to add to the recovery gear discussion? Mine's right. I don't know if it's recovery, mm. but I always have like a small bottle of oil tucked behind my back seat too, in case of anything. If for you whatever reason my oil is low, huh? But oh, you yeah, always have fluids. coffee too. Sure, I don't switch them. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> one of the things we carry with and, it, and it's. <laughs> It, one of the things we carry with us is actually related to what we will with is actually fluids for a lot. Uh, we every carry fluid. every fluid. Yep. I actually have all the hoses for the Panastar 3.6 radiator and car <laughs> and uh, coolant oh system that because of the problems that we've had in the past. Um, you know, it's, those are the things, but, you know, we, you bring oil, but one of the things that's really been the most important is Swepco, the power steering it's Like every time we, we've oh, passed yeah. out bottles of Swepco. We've been passed, we've that's passed it passed. out on the trails, but that's what because you we guys have hydraulic do, yeah. steering. Yep, exactly. Yeah. I think another we gave yeah. a bottle away during the uh, winter 4x4, four four, even, so. I would say yeah. we, yeah, I, Pat, if Pat any fluid that, that. Yeah. Pat went through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but. Like that, I mean, that's not the first time we've passed out Swepco, though. I feel like that's the number. If you're rock crawling, that's probably the number one fluid that you end up having issues with. I don't know. Lately, the Lucas fuel injector cleaner has been serving its purpose. <laughs> that's a nice you know, all that bad gas that you get in Moab, it's like that stuff makes, you know, works wonders. All of a sudden, you're yeah. shaking violently. You put some of that in, and it's like... Oh, I put new. some of that in hologram, and it made a whole difference in the way that Jeep was driving. It's amazing. So that's something that we kind of recently added and we always have it with us now. Yeah, I would say Jem feels a lot better ever since you told me to do that. Yeah, it helps. One of the, the Ryan on our Instagram feed mentioned he carries some sensors with him that he knows are prone to failing. And yep. yeah, he is in the same boat on that too. Yeah, yep, for sure. I have a anything that's reader, ever been a big... reader. Yeah, anything that's yeah. ever been a problem, I have an extra. Yeah. Those uh -huh. new Jeeps, it seems Big like you got to carry a lot with truck. you. Yeah. Jeeps, oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just plug myself as an LJ snob because there's so little to wow. go wrong. Yeah, with. no, I'm just, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I need to turn my lights up because there's so much shade coming in from Aaron's side of the house right now. <laughs> I told you, the bitch. LJs are elitist. They're Damn. elitist. <laughs> oh, I know. Brian Boudreaux has one, like, and I'm aware of the problem. Yes. Ryan yeah. is worse than I am. I mean, Ryan might not remember who I am or whatever, but I know Ryan plenty just from learning LJs and being a part of the forums. Ryan is. I love Ryan, and I'm almost positive he's not listening, so you're good. I... <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, I guess cool. uh, something um, I wanted to throw in, too, about, with the recovery kit um, and training. You know, I know that's not really like essentially part of the kit but the knowledge will be um a lot yeah. of people you know go buy this stuff and you know based off of seeing us use it right or some instagram or youtuber like matt um but have no idea what to do when the time comes right 
uh, between all the YouTube videos or different guides out there, or hell, even the manufacturers themselves definitely should learn uh, about your equipment before going yeah. out and expecting to use it. And I, I, I don't know that Matt wants the, uh, from on trail training in Colorado wants the shout out, but I will give it to him anyway. Um, that's, we, we talked about it with him and, uh, the, it, I mean, he just goes through a lot of basics that I think a lot of people don't get when they get out there. And a lot of these Jeeps are so capable out of the box. Um, the new Broncos are so capable out of the box and people can get themselves in real trouble real fast because they don't, they just don't know what they're doing yet. I mean, we see that yeah. quite well, a bit. Well, I've said that a million. And, and Go like, with my job, I'm like, I'm, I'm doing like 35 events a year at least. And so oh, yeah. there, there's definitely a lot of the like n- new people, you know, and that's great. It's, it's great to have new people along to help grow the sport. Right. Um, right. at the same time, like a lot of people think because somebody else is doing it that they can. Right. And then they get themselves into trouble because they don't know how to react. Right. Um, yeah. as, as we saw at winter four by four out on a eight rated trail, uh, unfortunately the guy rolled. Right. Um, and he just didn't know how to, how to react when the situation was going awry for him. Um, luckily we had a good group with us and the right tools, but, um, yeah, definitely people need to take a second and realize that you know harm could be done a lot of damage to their vehicles <laughs> yeah for mm-hmm. real like if you just got your jeep you know don't go out in the sixes and the tens and, and just take your time take a class watch youtube yeah, do something Creek is your second day in Moab. yeah i, I feel You're like um, oh, you don't think hamburger <laughs> hill will go well no no that's actually <laughs> when we turned around that's when we turned around but that wasn't where we damaged the mist where did you oh, damage we're it? speaking of experience i got it <laughs> no. our first trail all by ourselves like just me and pope and i've said this a million times on this podcast is bring a friend like learn Like, I don't think you should go out and buy a bunch of shit. Like, I honestly don't think you should go buy a bunch of crap that we're telling you to, we're talking about. I think you should go out with people who are experienced and that can teach you these kind of things. And then you realize what you really actually need. And like you said, the education, the experience and learning those kind of things. Now, we didn't necessarily mean to be alone on Canes Creek with Mm. zero (laughs) skill or any. We were supposed to be out there with my cousin and his friends, but they were all side by side. And they took off. And Uh. so we decided, let's see what's going to happen next. And then we got to Hamburger Hill and I thought I was going to throw up. (laughs) And I was like, there is no way we're ever doing that. So we had to turn around and go back. And then the entrance where there's that jetting out rock, I was spotting Pope through it. And he basically took out his whole front end and some guy was watching he's like I'm like that's amazing we had never been on a trail alone before and we'd probably only had our jeeps for like two or three months when we went out we went out to Kane's Creek with Josh a few months ago back in fourth of July weekend (laughs) we looked at it and like oh "Oh, what the hell (laughs) done this no problem I remember telling everybody, I'm like, I would never do anything like Hamburg Hill Hill. And it's like a dead it trap. It's easy. And I like looked at it and I was like, you got like five feet till you're at the cliff. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> there? Like, there's so much room. There's so much room. That was just It's really just funny. one of those things that when anyway. you're when you're new and you don't know, it's super scary, super sketchy. I thought it was gonna throw and up that's in my car. Why you should bring someone who knows what's going on. That was me the first time I did cliffhanger. Thought I was gonna throw up. <laughs> yep. Now I'm just like, whatever. Let's, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I literally understand. was sitting. Yeah. What was that? No, go ahead. I was just saying, like, you're literally sitting there looking at this thing, and you're like, how do people not die every single day on this like place? <laughs> like, I was literally like, I was so nauseous. I was willing to drive all the way back in the dark on that trail, the rest of that trail, than to ever have to like climb that spot. And then, yeah, when we saw it. Like three years later, I went. Oh, <laughs> it was a lot of years of experience. A lot of experience later, right? What was that? Probably what the uh, secret of our sport is. Yeah. It's way more dangerous than we say it is. I know oh, it's I way know. more dangerous than I told my mom it was back in the day. I was, I was, I was not not entirely accurate about the level of uh, potential death, if you will. Adding What'd you say? Is there... <laughs> death. Uh, no I'm as I mean, safe-ish as I possibly can safe-ish be. Safe-ish as you can be. No, that, that's what's funny about you two. Like, Randy, I, I feel is, like, super technical and really safe, like she says, right? And then Pope just gets super excited and in his groove <laughs> and likes the throttle. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
<laughs> We're in like trouble. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. We should have named so my Jeep Party Jeep, Jeep man. What's <laughs> Word. Like yeah, there's, there's things that I did in San Hollow during uh during a Trail Hero and Winter Four by Four. I'm like, but the old shocks wouldn't have lasted through this, but this is still sketch what I'm doing, but it's fun as shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, 100 percent And I, I and the reason I I only say that because it, it's it's something that you need to be aware of. It, that it, it's just like being on the highway, except now you're potentially, you know, purposely rolling your Jeep or almost purposely rolling your Jeep. And it's just something to be aware of. It's a matter of respecting the road and the trail that you're on because it could kill you. It could. It, it honestly, nothing I mean, slowed me down more than rolling my Jeep. Yep. <laughs> there you go. But like Josh and Aaron, you guys did red I cone, drive right? like a grandma now. You guys know <laughs> there are parts of that trail where there's no mistakes to be made. It's just yep. you got to be paying attention. You got to be present. You got to do it. Yeah, so what, I just don't want to discount trails, that. Yeah, you can really, you know, you could fall off and be gone, and nobody would find you for a long time. So. Yep, exactly, exactly. All right. Going well, on that, that fine too, note, what'd you say? Thing. No, go ahead, Alyssa. Um, uh, especially if you're new, don't just assume that someone who has a big, like, built-up rig is a good spotter either. Like, yeah, have a solid good spotter. Find someone you can. That's really great advice. advice. And if you have multiple, yeah, I learned like, that the one. hard way. Don't look at everyone. Pick one. Yeah. How much did that I'll cost? Be willing you, to tell everybody. What? I asked Josh how much did it cost. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I don't know. I'd like to blame bad spotting that time I broke my rear axle, but I can't. That was just me being mm. stupid. I don't know. That's how I feel about my situation in July, my friend. Don't feel bad at all. Yeah, exactly. Man, if I had a better spotter when I rolled. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that's what I said for a long time too. After my role, I mean, it, but trust your gut, right? In your, in your, in your situation, it's true though. In, your, in my situation, there was there's no know, need yeah. for a spotter. Yeah, but, we know. I mean, my my gut was screaming at me. It's like, no, I, I'm all topped out. The jeep's topped out. Like, I, I shouldn't go anymore, right? But you just thinking that the person that's spotting you uh, might have like the most capable vehicle, right? And um, sometimes it outdrives them so uh always just trust your gut i think so and, and there's no shame in that right like just right there's no shame in backing mm -hmm. out of an obstacle yep. because you're afraid you're going to roll something no so. shame in winching either i think that's uh that yeah that's everybody yeah, should too, yeah. be comfortable Definitely. you know pulling the winch cable out if, if you need to at that point so yeah hey. why break your stuff yep you don't need there's to winch out right like, take it from me take it from pope i mean it's it's very expensive to fix a flopped or completely rolled over g it is and time-consuming. You You'll be out for a long time. Yeah, that's well, the other I thing. Well, I also think... Oh, I think as a girl, like, a lot of times there's 20 people yelling at you. And I think having the balls to just put your head out the window and be like, everybody else, shut up. I'm listening to that person. I think yeah. it's really, like, you just need to be able to say that kind of thing. Because when there's 45 people yelling at you, 45 different things, just there's no shame in saying, hey, I'm not listening to any of you. I'm listening to that guy or yeah. that girl, whoever you're trusting in front of you. Too. Yeah, don't yeah. let peer pressure get in the way of you and your vehicle safety. So, I, And I think that's, like, the perfect prevention to needing any recovery gear at all is paying attention to your spotter and then recognizing when you need to pay attention to your vehicle or yourself. Um, and just kind of, and that comes with time that comes with effort. So stop going out there on those six and 10 trails on your first time out. Cause we all have to spend our time waiting for you guys to get through or trying to help you guys winch out or do whatever it is. And like, I don't mind helping you, but I, I'm not going to lie that I don't hide a little resentment for the person. I can obviously tell this is their second time doing anything. They came out by themselves with no recovery gear and no idea what they're doing. I guarantee you I'm judging. You. So, yeah. All right. Just then. don't do it. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'll help you. you said I love you. Said. you. I said what I said. I, no, no. And I, don't you tell, don't act like you all don't feel the same way. No, it's true. Oh, I've made comments yeah. similar to this, but not quite that blunt. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm four or five beers in at this point. I'm blunt. I'm in blunt zone. But so. uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's one thing to, I would say, yes, you want to challenge yourself, but don't jump into the deep end on your first day. Give yourself yeah. a little bit of uh, time to work up to it because it takes time. It's not an instantly learned skill. It's not 
you you know when you first learn to drive your parents were probably frightened every time you got behind the wheel and that's kind of the way you should feel when you first start doing off-road rock crawling for the first little while you should be terrified every time you're behind it you should just bring get that energy to learn every it. trail for the first year or two <laughs> yeah for sure i don't know like, I have a lot of friends that I love to put in really sketchy situations yeah, and they, we just let it happen. But they're <laughs> not. Kids, like, I love taking the new kids out and just, like, right. the, you the know what? Kid, the new kids it's still like, controlled like themselves, environment. So. Yeah. It's a, yeah, right. it's a simulation. They've still proven you know. themselves in some way. I'm like, what? Right. Like, I've, I've got a few friends that I shouldn't have taken places, and I am totally <laughs> proud of it. We had so. a few on, was it, Brockbuster and Vernal? That, that was an interesting day for a few people, it seemed like. That was funny. I mean, I love taking the new kids out and showing them what their Jeeps can do or what their stuff yeah, can do. And so, I think that's but, different. But I mean, yeah. all by yourself, like, I mean, not, like, you like to wheel by yourself and so somebody yeah. else going out by themselves. But that's the first thing I always tell people. Get out, be on the trail. I think it's awesome that people are doing it, but go out with people that kind of have an idea of what's going on and then you can kind yeah. of figure out what you need and those kind of things. And how you want to wheel and what kind of gear you need to get yourself out of the situations yeah, that you're you probably going to find yourself in. You may not want to do the rock crawling that Randy yeah. and Aaron and Josh and I do. You might want to do more mud type wheeling or you may want to do yeah. sand dunes. Or you might want to do the overlanding like you guys like yeah. to do too. So it just yeah. depends. Cool. All right, we'll let's see if we got any last comments from the web and trail etiquette. Yeah, Ryan, we're going to talk about trail etiquette on another show. So that's, that's, I want to talk about that one, but I really want Jason for that discussion. Uh, Cause I, <laughs> I, I feel like Jason has feelings about uh, trail etiquette. So yeah, I actually thought about doing <laughs> yes, that one tonight yeah. and I changed my mind. Cool. All right. Uh, well, last chance, anybody, any last thoughts or uh, last things that they want to do before we sign off here? We've been at this for a while. Doyle rules. Or Doyle rules indeed. I need, to, right. I need to make a second drink next time, I think, or have it right next to me, ready to go. Yeah, so, so here's the Josh thing, and Aaron, it. you're welcome back it. anytime, Aaron. Yeah, exactly. Um, I actually have a little refrigerator in my office over Ooh, here, and I've just, there you go. I slowly, I just grab beers as I run out, so I highly recommend it's like $30 I'm from on the You're not invited back, though, Josh. Aaron, you can come back, but Josh, you can't. Damn. <laughs> Josh caused wow. the least trouble of anybody today. He's been like, for real. Josh doesn't do it very much. He's back, but not Josh. I thought He's that was so rude of you. I haven't gotten there yet. No. <laughs> Damn it. Give him, give him a chance. Josh, well, piss I mean, off. I, you don't, I don't want you late, right? And I didn't bring, bring gifts, so, you know, I get it. Amazing. You know, it's like <laughs> when people call me DJ in the show, I feel like I'm not respected. Oh. All right. <laughs> okay cool all right well josh you two are welcome back anytime thank you very much for coming Aww, thank you. You. Thank you. So, um yeah so that's I, let's get out of here guys uh we're coming up on two hours um we've we've rambled on for quite a long time here and aaron has repeated a couple times he's out of a drink and i feel bad for him so okay cool yeah so next time just make sure you have like just make a picture of them and just slowly tip off yeah. and top yourself off as the night goes on no, it is. it's just, it's or just, just bring the whole bottles upstairs with you while you do it or that i gotta, I gotta look professional right well yeah. we, we you know what Wait, I, you I, I, really, I feel really bad that other than randy <laughs> we have managed to go the entire episode without actually naming your organization so i feel really good about that yeah <laughs> other than randy's tried, illusions really that she made yeah uh, randy did not yeah <laughs> can okay. jump on, the the light, bitch. on a friday <laughs> podcast with friends, right? cheers this is aaron aaron mercer jeep enthusiast yeah. jeep enthusiast <laughs> cheers all right cool hey, well, anybody know um, any companies that have a cage coming out soon <laughs> be really awesome yeah Jesus can anybody Christ. recommend a vendor Josh. that might have a cage that would want to install it in the rubistina because, like, well, I'm really if, scared if that he does. Then you're really like second, maybe third, maybe tenth in line at this point. All Aaron, I would like to get mine before Josh. Aaron, I'd like it to be known that none of these people are representative of me and our podcast as a whole. So please come back and join us sometime. <laughs> no, thanks for having me. It was great. Awesome. It's nice to uh, have a Very perspective fun. Cool. that doesn't always involve work too, and just come in. There you as go. A, yeah, like, yeah. Go I think so. I, I think that's. I'm really, I'm really happy. That's kind of what we're turning Friday is into i think it should just be a bunch of us sitting around having a beer i think in the summer i'm going to take this bitch outside and have a campfire and just uh i think it's going to be good i think we'll have a good time so so yeah josh you're welcome back anytime aaron you're welcome back anytime please come back and see us again those of you out there in the podcasting world if you're still listening to us please drop us a line at 719-408-0132 
uh, or visit us at the trailhead network.com for all the other ways to get in touch with us, including uh, checking out the live feed ways to ask live questions. Um, yeah. All the fun stuff, blog posts, news, information, whatever you want. Parting shot, gentlemen, ladies. Parting shot time. Randy's going to pour some more. Yeah, no, I'm just going to take it from the bottle. Whoa, I only have so water. Jack, Dang. You, Jack, I think <laughs> because if for no other reason than you are currently in a vehicle, you should probably <laughs> stick with water. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just for don't, legal don't drink purposes. And, drink yeah. and drive, Josh. <laughs> all right. Cheers, all everybody. Much. There you go. <laughs> cheers. That's all right. All right. Well, thank you all very much. We'll see you next time at the trailhead. Take care, everyone. Okay. Good night, everybody.